Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to learn how to screen print shirts with the help of a Cricut. Once you've learned the process, screen printing will open up so many project possibilities for you. It takes some practice, sure, especially when you're applying the ink, but we'll cover tips and tricks to make it super easy. So let's head on over to the craft table and we will get started. Screen printing creates beautiful layered designs, but it can be intimidating, I know. Inks, a frame, stencils, an alignment, it's more involved than your average Cricut craft. But making your stencils and some alignment tools with the Cricut will make it so much easier to tackle. Now, one of my favorite parts of screen printing is adding designs to shirts without losing their softness and drape. Sometimes you really just don't want a big piece of vinyl on your garment. And with screen printing, you don't have to have that. It's super soft and it looks beautiful. And you can use any type of shirt for screen printing except nylon and 100% polyester. Those are the two you want to avoid. I have found that 100% cotton shirts like the Bella Canvas white ones that I'm using today work best for screen printing. Now you might be wondering, do you pre-wash or not pre-wash? If you're making your shirt to sell or display, I don't recommend you pre-wash them. The color of the shirt will remain more vibrant and professional without the pre-washing. If on the other hand, you're making the shirt for personal use or as a gift, the choice is yours. If you do pre-wash, be sure to press the shirt nice and flat to remove any wrinkles. I did not pre-wash mine and they worked perfectly. So it's your choice. If this is your first time screen printing, have a few test shirts or fabric pieces ready and cut extra copies of your vinyl stencils just in case. Getting the ink amount and the squeegee pressure takes some time and practice, so don't try it out on your favorite shirt right away. Practice first. Now I use my Cricut Maker 3 to cut my stencils, but a normal Cricut Maker or a Cricut Explore machine will also work. I made the stencils out of permanent vinyl cut on a green standard grip machine mat. I'll show you how to prepare everything. It's very similar to other vinyl decal projects, so you'll want to have those types of tools as well as transfer tape ready. Now, what else do you need? You need the screen printing kit that's in my materials list. It will come with a 10 by 14 inch frame, which is a good size for shirts. It also has a squeegee and it has some popsicle sticks, which we'll use. You don't need the other things for this project. We'll also need special screen printing ink. I really like Speedball's ink for fabric, so I'm using white, red, black, and iridescent emerald. This one right here. There are so many colors available and you can even mix them to create custom colors. In this video, I'll show you how to get the ink to the right consistency, but I recommend you have a few bowls or red solo cups, some water and an eyedropper ready. And yes, ink is messy, so have some butcher paper ready to protect your work surface. I also recommend some disposable gloves and an apron to keep yourself relatively clean. And speaking of clean, it's really important to keep your screen and your tools in good shape. So I will show you how to take care of everything with some water and a soft toothbrush. So when you get to the printing part, I'll show you some alignment tricks involving some cardstock, some painter's tape, and some little dots you'll see. So be sure to take some notes. Now heat setting your designs is the last step, so I'll show you how easy it is to do with the Cricut Auto Press. If you're using a Cricut Easy Press, make sure you have a pressing mat like I have sitting here or a towel that is bigger than your design so you can set it evenly. Now, are you ready to learn a new way to use your Cricut? Let's get started with screen printing. Step one, get your screen printing designs. I've prepared some screen printing designs and a blank stencil for you. To find them, go to jennifermaker.com 435 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs on the page by searching for design number 435 and then click it to download a zip file. There are four files in the folder designed to fit on a medium-sized unisex t-shirt. There's the BU design, 
the Chase Your Dreams design, the Happiness Comes From Within design, and a blank stencil you can use for any design you wish. The three designs are set up to be printed in two colors. I'll show you how to print the Chase Your Dreams design in red and emerald green ink on a white t-shirt, but you can choose any ink and shirt colors you'd like. Upload the SVG cut file of your choice to your design software. If you're not sure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com SVGS to learn how to unzip and upload files. I'm going to show you how to prepare them to cut on a Cricut cutting machine. Step two, prepare your screen printing design. Let me first show you how to use the blank stencil to create any design you wish. Then I'll show you how to prepare my other designs that have two colors. Here's what my blank screen printed stencil looks like on the canvas in Cricut Design Space. You can zoom out to see all of the design by clicking on the minus sign on the lower left. This stencil has two squares and a circle at the top, which we'll use as alignment or registration marks. There's also a circle alignment symbol to the right, which is useful if you want to use multicolored designs. To begin using this blank stencil, select it on your canvas, then click ungroup above the layers panel. To personalize this blank stencil, simply find an image that you like under the images tab. I recommend you filter the images by clicking browse all images, then click free and under operation type, choose cut only, and then choose an appropriate image. Pay attention to layers. You can do multiple layers, but single layers are easiest if you're a beginner. I chose this Cricut Cutie, which is number M389A15A2. Select the image and then click Add to Canvas. The image will appear on your canvas. Now just click and drag a corner of it to resize it to fit inside your stencil. Now select both the blank stencil and the image and click combine below the layers panel. Then choose exclude. This creates the stencil with the negative space you need for your ink. Note that you could also use slice instead, but using the exclude feature under combine is faster and it means you can undo it later if you decide you don't want that design after all. So that's how you make your own screen printing stencil. But I also pre-designed some two-color screen printing stencils for you to learn with. Multicolor screen printing ink is applied in perfectly aligned layers, one color at a time, so this SVG has two layers. The design is separated into two pieces, one for each color. Each piece has two squares and a circle at the top, which we'll use as alignment or registration marks. There is also a circle alignment symbol between the pieces, so don't lose it during weeding. To make the design smaller, keep the lock icon closed, then click and drag a corner to your desired size. Or type a new dimension into the width or height box at the top menu under size. I don't recommend making the designs bigger, however, because you would then need a larger screen printing kit than I included in my materials list. Now the design is ready to cut. Step three, cut and weed your vinyl stencils. Make sure the correct machine is selected in the top right and then click make it. If prompted, click on mat 12 by 12 and continue. On the prepare screen, make sure you see two mats. All screen printing stencil designs should be mirrored so the design will read correctly after it's done. So toggle mirror on for both mats. Click back on the first mat and select continue. On the make screen, select the premium vinyl permanent glossy setting and change the pressure to more for a cleaner cut. You can also check remember material settings to save a little time. Place your vinyl shiny side up on a green standard grip machine mat. I'm using gold for both layers, but you can use whatever permanent vinyl you have. Use a brayer to make sure it's fully adhered to your mat and check that your fine point blade is clean and in clamp B. Then load the machine mat into your Cricut and press the flashing button to cut your stencil. When the cut is finished, unload the mat, flip it over, and roll the mat back to release the vinyl. This helps prevent unwanted curling. Repeat these steps for your next stencil. Once the vinyl is done cutting, you can weed the design, but it's important to understand that this will be the opposite of a normal decal or reverse weeding. 
Remove only the parts that you want to print with ink, which are usually your letters, images, and registration marks. Leave everything else, including the large sections of vinyl around the cut design. Those will protect the rest of your shirt from the ink. Remove the extra vinyl around the outside of your large rectangle and small circle. You can use scissors to separate them. Here is how my design layers looked all weeded. Pretty different from normal, I'd say. Step four, prepare your screen. First, protect your work surface with a drop cloth or butcher paper. This process can get messy, so also wear some old clothes, an apron, and gloves when it's time to print. Next, especially if you're using a new screen, use a lint roller to gently remove any debris or wood splinters from the equipment. Grab your first stencil. I'll start with the one that says Chase Dreams. Place the decal face up on your workspace. Cut a piece of transfer tape the same size as your stencil so you can cover the design and the vinyl border. Remove the backing and set it aside to save the tape for the second layer. The tape might be too sticky to easily remove later, so stick it to a shirt or paper towel a few times to make it less strong. Next, apply the transfer tape to your vinyl decal by holding the transfer tape in the shape of a taco or a U-shape and then put the bottom of the taco onto the middle of your stencil. Smooth the tape from the center outward using the extra large scraper. Gently lift the transfer tape, bringing the design with it. If the vinyl does not stick to the transfer tape, place it back down and burnish it with a scraper on both sides and then try again. Next, place the stencil on the back side of the screen, which is flat with the frame. Don't try to burnish or remove the tape yet. Flip the screen over so the indented side faces you. Burnish the design onto the screen with the scraper. Now flip the screen and remove the transfer tape. If it doesn't come up easily, start at one corner and peel a little off to start. Then put your thumb or hand on the uncovered vinyl and start pulling the transfer tape off at an angle. Make sure the vinyl stays on the screen. If it comes up, place the transfer tape back down and burnish it again from the other side. Once the transfer tape is off, set it on its backing liner to reuse. Now flip your screen over to the front again and gently burnish the design onto the screen using the extra large scraper one more time. Make sure it's really stuck. On the back side of the screen, add painter's tape to the top, bottom, and sides of the screen to cover the bare areas. Overlap the tape so that the ink can't get through. The cut design areas should be the only spots where you can see the screen. Step five, prepare your shirt for screen printing. You'll need your shirt, a heat press, a pressing mat, a lint roller, your prepared screen, some painter's tape, and some pieces of cardstock. Place your shirt face up on the pressing area and lint roll it to remove any debris. Press the design area at 320 degrees Fahrenheit for about five seconds to make sure your shirt is nice and smooth. Put a large piece of cardstock inside the shirt under where the design will go to add structure and catch any ink bleed through. Make sure the fabric is flat, then position your prepared screen where you want the design to be. Peel the registration circle cut by itself up like a sticker and place it on the center of the collar. Now place the screen down so that the circle on the shirt lines up with the circular hole in the design. That's how we'll keep everything centered. There should be just a thin gap between the shirt and the screen if you gently press it on the design. If the screen isn't completely level, ask someone to help you hold it flat while you apply ink. Slide the two small pieces of scrap paper between the squares on the screen and the shirt. Hold them in place with painter's tape on the fabric. We'll ink over the cut squares during the first layer and use the dried shapes to align the second layer, but the cardstock keeps the color off the shirt. Place a piece of tape over the circle at the top of the design to keep ink from going through. Step 6. Screen print your shirt. 
This can get messy, so now is the time to put on your apron and gloves and then open the ink and remove the seal. Stir the ink really well with a stick from your screen printing kit. It is very thick, like paint, and shouldn't readily drip off the stick or be stringy, but just flow nicely. Use the stick or a disposable spoon to dollop ink onto the screen just above the square holes. Also, add a decent amount of ink across the screen right above the design. It also helps to spread the ink out evenly at the top. More ink is better than not enough, and we can reuse any excess ink, so be generous. Then, making sure not to jostle the shirt or the frame, place the flexible end of the squeegee above your ink spots. Without applying pressure, squeegee the ink toward yourself in a smooth motion to coat the design and squares in a thick layer from top to bottom. Don't go bottom to top or you might get leaks under the stencil. We're just covering the screen with ink, which is called flooding, so don't worry about making it perfect. Go back to the top and press firmly and evenly while squeegeeing down to the bottom. You should see a line of ink at the bottom of the frame. Now pressure is important, and this might be where you use a few test shirts. I sure did. Too much pressure will cause bleeding by squishing ink under the vinyl. Not enough pressure will prevent the ink from going through the screen, and the design won't be even. Scoop up some of the excess at the bottom, bring it to the top, and squeegee it down again. You do not need to include the squares in the process after the first round. Repeat a few times until all areas of the design are thoroughly coated. Once you've finished squeegeeing, hold down the shirt with one hand and slowly lift the screen off of it with your other. Leave the vinyl circle and painted cardstock pieces in place. If your ink is splotchy and you're sure that you used an even amount of pressure with a completely flat screen, try thinning out the ink again with some water. The first layer needs to dry completely before you continue. The drying time depends on the amount of ink you applied and your local conditions. The thicker the ink, the longer it will take to dry. It could take anywhere from 40 minutes to a few days. Seriously. (laughs) I waited at least an hour before checking if my ink was dry. To test if it is dry, check if it still looks shimmery. If so, it's definitely still wet. If it doesn't shimmer, lightly touch it with your finger. It must feel completely dry before you can add another layer, so wait extra time if necessary. No matter what, do not let ink dry on the screen. It will be ruined. While the ink dries on the shirt, wash your screen and squeegee in a utility sink with warm water. Darker inks may color your sink, but I've chosen non-toxic inks so you can clean your supplies outside with a hose if you need to. Rinse most of the ink from the screen first, then peel the vinyl and the masking tape off. Don't dent the screen, but thoroughly scrub it with a soft or medium bristle toothbrush, rinsing with water to check your progress. If the ink is stubborn, try hot water. Rinse off the rest of your supplies and set them out to dry thoroughly before going on to the next color. Mine took 40 minutes in the sun on a dry day and two hours with a fan inside the house so that you know. Once everything is dry, add your second stencil to the back of the screen just like the first layer. You can use the same piece of transfer tape even. Then make sure the shirt is flat again Line up the new stencil square holes with the painted squares on the cardstock scraps. Make sure you can't see any of the cardstock around the paint. The circles should also line up with the matching shape on the shirt. Place tape over the circle at the top of the design. Then stir your second color of ink really well. Dollop a generous amount across the screen just above your design, but you don't have to ink over the squares this time. Remember, more ink is better than not enough. Use your squeegee to flood the screen with ink from top to bottom. Next, go back to the top and press firmly while squeegeeing down to the bottom. Remember to use the same amount of pressure that worked the first time. Again, scoop up some of the excess ink that's on the bottom, bring it to the top, and squeegee again. 
Repeat this a few times just like we did before. Make sure to get all areas of the design thoroughly coated. Once you've finished squeegeeing, hold down the shirt and slowly lift the screen off. Make sure you're happy with the coverage before moving the screen or shirt. Step 7. Clean up and let the shirt sit. Set the shirt to dry and clean off your supplies just as before. The second layer might seem dry after the same amount of time as the first layer, but I recommend you wait at least 48 hours before heat pressing it to seal the ink. Step 8. Seal the ink with a heat press. You can use a Cricut Easy Press with a pressing mat or an auto press or a traditional heat press to seal the screen printing. I'm going to use my Cricut Auto Press. Set the temperature to 320 degrees Fahrenheit and the time to 40 seconds. Place a piece of butcher or parchment paper over the top of your printed design to protect your heat plate from the ink. Once your heat press is up to the right temperature, press your shirt with light pressure and then give it a minute or two to cool before touching it. And there is our finished screen printed shirt. There! Not as intimidating now that you've seen the whole process, right? You can totally do this. Now to make your designs last for a long time, you'll want to wash your screen printed shirts inside out with cold water. So you just turn it inside out, just as I'm doing like this. And since they're heat set, they will last ages. Now, one trick that I've learned along the way is that letting the ink totally dry in between layers is super important. Don't get impatient or you'll end up with blotchy designs. However, the drying time is also an opportunity if you make a mistake. If you're not happy with how a layer comes out, just wash the shirt with cold water while the ink is still wet. The ink should come right out. If you have a dry layer on the shirt, it will also come out since it's not heat set yet. Just make sure your shirt is completely dry before trying again. And when you're ready to make more screen printed designs, I have some extra tips for screen printing in my tutorial at jennifermaker.com slash how to screen print a shirt with Cricut. I show you how to make your own designs. Now, if you have any questions about screen printing, making stencils, or anything else craft related that I might be able to help you with, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over in our awesome Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I love to help and see you succeed. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.